If you want to support Tux Drip, uh, the <laughs> first and only time you'll ever hear that on this podcast, um, and all the content we put out, you should ever go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash cmdtower. One of the perks is that we do announce, no matter what tier you're on, uh, when you join the community. So we want to do a big shout out to Marcos Ramirez. He joined Woo! about a few weeks ago, but it was Gessemberthon uh, or D- Toyota Thon. It's Gessember. Oh, Gessember. Gessember. Right. Um, so during guest summer, all the episodes were pre-recorded, so we couldn't do any patron announcements. But Marcos, super appreciate you joining the community, man. Welcome. It's great to have you. Uh, definitely, you should get into the Quarantine Battlegrounds and try to get some games in. But yeah, guys, even joining for a dollar a month and getting access to the Discord gets us to our patron goals that we're aiming for, which is to get to 50 patrons and be able to start having you guys on every single month with Brews and Builds. But if you can't do that or you're curious about what other benefits there are, it really... There's a ton of them. There's a lot of stuff. We've actually refreshed a lot of our benefits um, in the month of December. So to give you guys a little perspective of what's available and what's new, here it is. So something that we've actually added to our patron rewards uh, for our... Entry-level patron, uh, of course, you get entered in for the deck therapy, the character voice work for brews and builds, and one of the new things we've created, and guys, you can thank Dana Roach over at EDH Retcast and CMDR Central for this, we have created a new reward called the Collective Diagnosis. Ooh. So this is a patron-driven episode where we're going to give you guys a mechanic, a legendary creature, a random magic thing, and we're going to pick... 10 random patrons in the group every three months and you guys will have the option of either writing a one paragraph about a card and why you think that card should be talked about in relation to that thing that we gave you or super exciting as long as you have a setup that you can do it with you'll be able to record your own audio and actually be able to say it to the community and then me and Tuck will listen to your guys' responses and then in the same recording be able to respond back and say if we agree or disagree in our thoughts on your position of that card. Very, very exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Definitely something we're really just trying to supplement to our community. Now, the other thing that we have added is actually on our top tier. So this is the uh, Storm Count 1 tier. And what we've added to this is that you, a random patron, will get a guest spot on Brews and Builds every third month. So every three months, Tuck and I will pick a random patron in our top tier and go ahead and actually have you on and record with us a deck on your brews and builds. And we'll even give you the choice. Awesome. Classic episode, chaos draft, theory crafting. It's completely up to you. But that is another thing that we have added in to kick off 2022. Awesome. What a great... Yeah, we can't wait to have some people on every three months. And then hopefully that will slowly coincide to every month. Yeah, that'll be super pumped. Gr- great uh, and. It- and of course, guys, we do have a referral program. So, Marcus, this is like three, four weeks late. But if someone referred you, let us know. <laughs> let us know. Uh, but, you know, whenever you guys join, please message us on Patreon uh, to let us know if someone did refer you to the community. It could be like King uh, Richard. It could be like Limiting Linnings. It just kind of depends on who's out there. Gia, just let us know. And depending on the tier that you signed up for, we're going to reward them for growing that community. Now, it'd be remiss if we didn't mention our amazing store with our merch, cmdtower.com slash merch. Of course, this being January 2022, we do have our Jund holiday sweaters out there. Yes, the holiday season is kind of coming to an end, but it's a great time to pick up one of these 100% combed cotton sweaters. Uh, They're amazing quality. Of course, you have the CMD Tower Cruise uh, art on there. You got hops, greens, and yeast. It's very Bruise and Builds themed. Very, very awesome. And I believe by this point, we'll probably have our new foil Bruise and Blues. Bruise and Bruise Blues. And blues. I'm talking Bruise and Builds playmat. Uh, it's awesome. Marketing Ross actually took the art he did from our tokens, turned them into a constellation theme. Very much Theros Beyond Death feel. Um and created this great bruise and build for grains, hop yeast, bottle capping art for the middle. Well, you know what? I went in and hit up the uh, print supplier, and they actually made that middle section foil. So if you've ever wanted awesome. a stitched play mat that's foil for only like 25 bucks, 
head over to our store and order those things up because just like everything we do once we run out we're done with that and we're moving on to the next design and the next idea and of course if you can't support us financially whether it's through our merch sales whether it's through the website and the patron uh just share the content you're watching and listening to because every little bit of interaction from the collective does help and we would be remiss if we didn't do a plug for our great audio and video producer at underscore teacoats on twitter he's all over uh youtube he's all over the commander uh community he does great work for the channel but he can never improve if you don't let us know. So if you guys have ideas or suggestions or things you'd like to see, be sure to hit him up on Twitter so that way he can try to implement it. So Bruise and Builds is our deck tech series since we conquered the path to 32 and the 12 themes of EDH decks. We moved on to a segment called Say Yes to the Deck. Uh, this will comprise <laughs> of one of our hosts, today being Big Tuck, building a deck online Ayo. specifically geared towards the playstyle for the other, aka myself, uh, but still challenging how they play EDH. At the end, we will see if they say yes to the deck, but of course, and the heart of Brews and Builds is still here, so we describe the brewing of the deck similar to how beer is brewed. So we broke it down to four different categories. The first one's ramp and setting your board state. We call that grain. And grains are the foundation of every beer. They, both, they include both base malts and specialty malts, usually in a 60 to 40 ratio. This helps with the color, the taste, and most importantly, the alcohol content of that beer. Decks always need ways to grow, stabilize, and ramp into bigger threats. And just like a grain profile, they're usually a mix of staples and specialty cuts. All right, let's get into the grain section. Big Tux, since you built this deck for me, what is the first card you believe I should know about with Group Hug Feldgriff? So... Again, Mr. Combo is a bigger fan of the Tudors than I am. Uh, and there's one in here that I was shocked uh, that was only 39 cents. Uh, it's a Cuban cleric who some would say Ooh. has a noble. Oh, yeah. Him. Oh, yeah. All right. Ready? Three, two, one. Noble, noble benefactor. benefactor. Two colorless blue yeah. summary cleric. Uh, it's a, a version that I do not know. Weatherlight. Uh, and it's an uncommon, I think. Yeah, no, that's what I was like. Uncommon? Oh, oh, you're like, I, <laughs> I was back in the day, back the old borders. Okay. If Noble Benefactor would is put into any graveyard from play, each player may search his or her library for any one card and put that card into his or her hand. Each player who searches his or her library shuffles it afterwards. So again, this if I could run Scheming Symmetry in this deck, that would be my number one pick. No sure. questions asked, like running that in here. And this does that, but like even better, right? And then we've talked about, like, the Academy Rectors. What's the one that you like that's the Planeswalker one? Oh, uh... Arena Rector? Arena Rector. Arena Rector, right? And I think, like, this... Normally, there it's kind of like a... It's a it's like a shell game of, okay, I'm going to attack you for two. Well, I'm not going to block or board wipe because I don't want you to go get your best card. This one's even more complicated because it's not only you going and getting any card. It's everyone yeah. at the table. So it's like, I think it's going to be pretty easy to find someone that's going to be like, okay, hey, I'm coming at you... And if you block it with your 3-3, this is going to benefit you. And then someone else is going to be like, no, 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 no. I'm going to sword the plowshares this so that no one can get the benefit out of it because I don't trust these other people on it. And I love that idea of, like, again, forcing the opponents to have to make the choice on if this is going to go through or if, the, or if this is going to die and everyone's going to tutor. Yeah, I. this is definitely my flavor <laughs> of – uh, giving me a tutor, but then still pushing me out of the comfort zone of everyone gets to tutor. I actually think it would be a lot of fun, Tuck, and I, we're in the wrong colors for it. Right. Uh, but to do some sort of reanimator thing with mm. Noble Benefactor and just like, right. hey, who wants a tutor? Who wants a tutor? Oh, you <laughs> want a tutor? Oh, here, let me reanimate it. Boom. And let me sacrifice it. And then, oh, here you go. That, go get whatever card you want. It is I, weird I think, that it doesn't exile itself, right? Like, it just sits in your graveyard, which is insane. If this was printed today, I bet you it would say it would exile to, this. Right? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. But yeah, I'm here for it. You need ways to get cards at certain times of games. And what you pray is that I know I need to get X. Someone's going to go get the best card in their deck. Another person's probably going to get Y. And I just pray that the fourth person's going to get an answer to whatever person got oh. for their game winner. Because you know that's what someone's going to do that. I mean, if you play yeah. Noble Benefactor against me, I'm going to go get the best card in my deck. And I'm going right, to try to win right now. Uh, so that's just kind of what you hope. And you just kind of pray with the group hug thing. Someone's like, you know what? I don't necessarily need to get the best card in my deck right now. But I do need to get right. a uh, disallow. Because Tuck's probably going to go get his impact trimmers. Because he's ready to pop off in... Um, you know, 
whatever. So yeah, any of the any of the many decks I run impact tremors in. Yeah. All right. Well, my second one is cute because of the fact I can flash it in, and it still benefits everyone. It's just normally these benefity cards, you have to wait a turn cycle before you get the benefit. So Dictate of Karametra oh, allows right. everyone to get extra mana, but I can set it up to where I get it first. So three colorless green, green enchantment. It's a rare for a buck 38. It has flash, so I can play it at instant speed. And whenever a player taps a land for mana, they add one mana to their mana pool of any type that land produced. So I'm, I'm here for this. Uh, now, hold on. There is a little bit of flavor text, and we do have the wheel this week. You got an easy one. Obnixilis, Oberon, Martell. This is an easy one for you. This one's impossible for me. Yeah, but then you say that and I get put on the spot and then I'm going to do terrible. Yeah, yeah, then you panic, yeah. <clears throat> I refuse to let the folly of mortals endanger the home I made for them. Yeah, the mort the mortals. That that was that was what that's mortals. what buried that one out. Yeah. Uh so yeah, this this card's absolutely perfect. I can flash it in, leave up the five mana. People think, hey, he's the group hug player. Maybe he's just keeping removal up if someone does something disgusting and unfair for the table. And, you know, I might do that. But then right. hey, right before my turn, let me flash this in. Um, and it could be a card that I'll play at my main phase if I'm trying to politic someone. Hey, Tuck, well, I need your help. I see you only have three lands. I'm going to play this if you can, for six mana, wipe the, his yeah, board, board or her board. Or, yeah, 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 yep. 100%. So there's definitely some fun things you can do with it, but this is a group hug card that really doesn't have the drawback that the others have because I can get it first if I want. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I wanted to run as many of those as possible. Uh, the problem is this cycle, the 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 white one is atrocious in pretty much any deck. So I just couldn't I couldn't do it with the wherewithal to put it in here because it doesn't help anyone, including yourself. What is that? Dictate of Heliod, they all get plus yeah. one plus one? Plus plus two plus two for five. Whoa. Watch out! Not even first strike, nothing. Just plus two plus two. It's trash. Is, 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 is it at least just your creatures? I think ooh, hold on. It has to be your creatures. All the other dictates Cre yeah. are creatures you control. Creatures you control, yeah. If it was see, creatures, see, all that's, creatures. That's how they two. made it fair. That's how they made yeah. it fair. <laughs> Five mana for a plus two plus two boost at flash speed. Un unwinnable. All right. Well, Tuck, why don't you give us your second grain? Yes. Uh so this is a card that I actually had built as a command and it's in my least favorite color pairing, Selesnia. But in here, I think this does give you a lot of value, um, including this is a card that is a everyone gets something, but you generally will get more. And that one is not the Silvella, who's good and expensive, but the Silvella Explorer Return. So a colorless green and a white for legendary creature Elf Scout that is a rare, that's a 2-4 with parlay. Tap. Each player reveals the top card of his or her life. For each non-land card revealed this way, add one green to your mana pool and you gain each life. Then each player draws a card, and we do have a little bit of flavor text here as well, which is General Tazri, a.k.a. Uh, seasonally appropriate. Arnold from Jingle All the Way. The lowlands refuse to suffer at the whims of the high city. Put the cookie down <laughs> at the high city. <laughs> Sinbad, my nemesis. Uh, yeah, so... I like this card. I don't like it enough to run it in any deck of my own, and I hated running it as my commander because it just was stupid and just turned into Savala that with more steps hoops to go through. But generally, I think this is a way that everyone draws a card, including you. You'll add four and then gain four life on the top end of it. So pays for itself and can block the first turn it comes out. Yeah, I'm here for it. It's just the funny thing is that this card... Even though on the card it reads group hug, it's actually not group hug it's when not. you play it. Really it. <laughs> like, people want to kill you as soon as you see they see Silvala come out, even though they could get benefits from it. So it's very, right. very weird. Uh, but if you guys are looking for an easy three-card combo, this Intruder Alarm and the niv Mizzet, that whenever you draw a card, yeah. or sorry, Locust God, whenever you draw a card, you get a Locust, it'll untap, and then you just draw, make everyone yeah. draw their entire deck past the turn. Love it. Or, I'm here for it. Or um Umbra Mantle, even easier. You just, as long oh. as you keep generating mana, you just keep tapping her and going so god put it in we're putting it in all right well my last one is a planeswalker of course you know oh. i could not resist and it's party time we're Let's talking party. about jace bellerin time to party. uh this is colorless blue blue planeswalker jace mythic three uh loyalty is what it enters with and it, it hovers at about the three dollar mark which is fair i think for yeah totally um three activated abilities plus two each player draws a card 
Minus one, target player draws a card. Minus ten, target player puts the top 20 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So this is a card that probably doesn't see a ton of play, um, even though it's cheap. And it yep. is card draw for a cheap CMC Planeswalker. It's just a lot of people don't want to let their opponents draw. And the the minus one, yes, you could basically pay three to draw three and then it then he dies. But I f- just do the plus two. Yeah. I don't see myself, though, in this deck ever doing the minus 10. And I don't know if you ever would, right? Yeah, I I think I had that in my in one of my mill decks in some build for this sort of, like, backup. And because people just stop, they stop paying attention at some point. They're just like, all right, yeah. party J's, party J's, party J's. The only way that I think you would is if someone is, like, aggressively drawing. And you're like, mm. oh, I can knock this person out. But, yeah, I think literally I put this in here just so, like, literally just another dictate of crew fix. Or, yep. Uh, yeah, 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 of crew fix. Of, like, three mana, everyone draws a card, and you're just going to do it every turn, right? Yeah, I, I think the perfect correlation for this, and, Tuck, you've been in games where I've done this before, where my three mana Ashiok that I love, where I make you yeah, yeah, exile yeah. the top three. And sometimes she'll be at 18 loyalty, 20 loyalty, and everyone's like, oh, Mr. Combo's getting out of control. And I'm like, guys, I probably will never activate her. And I don't. I'll just have a stack of right. cards underneath. And it's like, if I get something just amazing, cool. But for the most part, I have her here for the plus yeah. effect. And I really see this Jace being the same thing. We could be at 21, 25 loyalty. And yes, I could do two activations of its ultimate. Probably still wouldn't do it. Yeah, I completely, completely agree on that. Um, but again, this is like the party. This is the party Planeswalker. And if there's anything that we like on this channel... It's partying. We yeah, absolutely. Party. I mean, I think Jace Bellerin is the mayor of Party City. So oh yeah, uh, he he loves he loves Halloween. Merit Merit Party Town. He owns Spirit Halloween. <laughs> Uh, and the reason that they always open and then close is because he planes walks away. He just transports <laughs> to another plane yeah, to open up more spirit Halloweens over there because now it's <laughs> Halloween there. Like he's like, man, next month on plane whatever Halloween is a month long. I got to, I got to build up my resources for this. Here we go, twenty thousand spirit Halloweens. All right, well, Tuck, why don't you give us your last grain? This is actually one of the cards that you brought up on a previous build. And I literally can't remember what it is right now, but this is when I was building this deck. And Mr. You brought this up. We're like, oh, that's really cool. And I immediately went and put it in my Google Keep that I have all my notes on decks I want to build for. And I think the reason why is like you don't you don't love burst draw spells that don't that you have to pay more resources into. I can't remember the the sequences of words that you have together of which ones you like or which one you don't, but well of ideas not only mm. benefits you, it benefits everybody even more. So, well of ideas, and actually something I noticed that's funny is a lot of these group hug cards got reprinted in double masters, which I think is funny, but huh. it's weird. I think it's because they're all two. So five yeah. colorless and a blue for an enchantment that's around a buck. When it enters the battlefield, draw two. At the beginning of each other player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. At the beginning of your draw step, draw two additional cards, right? So I think in the one turn cycle, if this is out, you're up four cards immediately for six mana, which is okay-ish. Yeah. But no one's going to... We've talked a lot about how enchantment removal is premium, right? We've kind of... I think we've kind of shifted artifacts down pretty far. I feel like there's a lot more artifact removal out there than people give it credit for. So they're not as protected. But still, with the amount of disgusting enchantments, even in this deck, no one's going to blow this up, right? Even if you ramp into this in Silvala on turn three, people are just going to love the extra draws and just let you keep drawing your extra two each turn and not give it a second thought. Yeah, I think we've actually talked about this card... On a previous deck, um, yeah, you brought because, this is you brought it up. This was yeah, your, this was a cut or an ad or something of yours. Yeah, this is actually a card that I am behind now. Granted, I'm not going out there buying a bunch of them for a dollar <laughs> and putting them in a <laughs> ton of decks because because it is six CMC. But right. here here's the way I look at it: if I'm gonna put a card draw spell in my deck and I'm running blue, I'm probably gonna put Well of Ideas in there because for me, six mana, I get to draw two cards immediately. There is no right. waiting. There is no delay. Uh, that right there is a terrible return. That's a <laughs> card for three mana. Uh, not a good rate. But right. to Tuck's point, this will not get blown up. Because what will happen is the people will say, well, I want to draw an extra card. So l- let me not counter it. Let me let me get to my turn. Yep. And then I'll disenchant it so no one else gets it. Well, then it gets to their turn. 
They draw an extra card. Well, man, I'd really like to use all my mana to be efficient and not just get rid of right. this thing. It, I'll, leave, I'll make someone else deal with it. And then the next person's like, well, I don't want to destroy it. I want to draw my extra card. But right. then the extra card's like, well, I guess I have resources now. I want to spend those resources to advance my board. No one's ever going to get rid of it. And if, it can, if I can at least get around to where I've spent six mana for four cards, that's a rate I'm willing to live with. Because that's like, what, 1.2 mana yeah. per card something like that something like that yeah uh 1.25 so i'm f i'm i can live with that but then once it gets around then my rate starts getting out of control and eventually right. i'm gonna be sub mana for each card i'm getting off of this and i'm just that's beautiful if you have this around for two turn cycles you are paying one mana a card right mm -hmm. which is bonkers and then, for yourself yeah and then after that it's just getting just cheaper and cheaper yep. and cheaper and, I, and that's and, why cards like Ristic study and this i'm behind because it's a permanent right, right. and you get the value constantly throughout the game and with the mana doublers like even Car dictated karametra how sweet would it be to be like okay draw dictated karametra i have well of ideas in hands i'm gonna wait cast dictate end of turn float six play this effectively for free and then carry on with my turn. Yep. So I think in this deck in particular, the mana cost is pretty well offset at different stages. Of yeah, totally makes sense. All right, well, that's going to wrap up the Rampant Grain section. Now we're going to head over to...